you may notice we don't have a quorum. So policy states we can't conduct business, but we will go over some of the uh, information to pass along. So we can't vote on anything and can't do any of the uh, business type reporting at this time. We're working, we're contacting other board members to uh, see about rescheduling for Thursday night uh, to do the business portion of the meeting. Uh, a couple board members are on vacation, the other two had some unexpected things come up. So we, we thought for sure we'd have four, but I'm sorry we don't. So, But we'll go ahead and have the pledge and uh, the signs. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. regards to the storm damage. Um, several have asked who our insurance is through, and so to clarify that, our insurance is through SCRIFT, which is uh, the, it's an acronym for Educational Service Center's Risk Funding Trust. We've been obviously in constant communication with them since the storm went through. Um, our deductible is a $1,000 deductible in regards to all storm damage. So everything that was hit or impacted across the district is counted as one incident, one uh, storm-related um, incident, so it's just a $1,000 deductible. So in regards to the football field, and I know Channel 4 is live streaming that right now, uh, for those who weren't aware, we had um, glass pieces up to the 50-yard line, and so through that we were concerned about the nature of the glass being drilled into the sod area and the risk that that might cause for our players moving forward. Uh, Escraft saw the same um, liability and concerns, and so we are in the process right now of resodding. About half of the field has been torn up. They anticipate the rest of the sod being torn up tomorrow. While we're in there, um, we're going to make just a little bit of an improvement in regards to the water lines for football players. That would not be included in the insurance, but something that we're looking at uh, for football and track that is out there. Um, the bid was approved, the board went through that last Thursday evening, and that bid was approved for $1,901. Uh, SOD will be laid on Wednesday. They believe to have the entire process done by Friday with the irrigation on that. If everything goes well within three weeks, we're going to have a nice root system. They ask then that we give it just another week or two. We'll continue to monitor that and follow their maintenance plan, but we will be well on schedule for football season to happen here at home. In uh, other areas of the athletic uh, area that were damaged or destroyed, both our vault and high jump pits were totally um, demolished. That has been approved in those new systems order. The total cost for both the pole vault and high jump pits to be replaced was about $34,000. Um, we do have fencing quotes for the baseball field where some flying debris damaged some of the baseball fencing with the mats and everything that blew from the pole vaults and from the high jump pit area. We had some damage to the football fencing. Those quotes are just now coming in. We also have the greenhouse that was totally damaged. Uh, the entrance has said that that has to be replaced in its entirety from the uh, foundation up. So it's actually a kit that sets on a foundation that's about knee high. So it's the kit that will need replaced. We sent out uh, a request for uh, bids from five different vendors. We have three that are very interested in uh, giving us a bid for that kit. We will have two on site tomorrow to actually see uh, if their kit will fit on the foundation in regards to how it is set up and then the, the piping, the heating, the cooling, the irrigation systems that are still intact. So we will know more after tomorrow's meeting with those vendors. We also have damage to the track that right now we're communicating with the entrance company on, uh, both with glass that has been literally um, pressed into the track area that we are afraid we won't be able to get out either through sweeping or through just trying to do an eyesight visual cleanup. 
We also have areas where flying debris would take chunks out of the track, and when that happened, it created soft spots around the area, compromising the integrity of the track in various areas. Entrance is worried that that will just continue to spread in that. So they are again reevaluating the track. We have quotes that run between 119,000 all the way up to about 193,000, depending on the nature of uh, the replacement of the track and um, if, how deep that we need to go. Um, I'm learning that it's very much like your basketball floor. You can only sand it down so many times. You can only replace it so many times before you're on the structural bottom of the track. So depending on how deep we have to go will be dependent upon that price. We also have <clears throat> just um, some damage to some of our entryways where the fascia blew off or some we have some lights hanging at the high school that will be replaced. All of those uh, we're working with our architectural design just to make sure we go back and stabilize all of those, replace that. And a lot of people have been asking about the tree in front of the high school, whether or not we will be able to take a portion of that and begin to carve something um, <coughs> Rochester, whether it's in, uh, the R or a zebra head, we are still looking at that. It appears to us that the trunk on the inside is pretty rotted out, which would allow, which would make it impossible to carve. So we have somebody coming in just to see how deep that rot goes and if there's anything worth saving that we might be able to make something of that to, to memorialize that tree and, and those events and what that represented to so many here at the school. So still digging into that portion of it. I think unless there are specific questions or clarifications, the damage, the full extent of the damage is still going to be right around $500,000. So far, the insurance will cover all except $30,000. $1,000 deductible, correct. Okay. Um, It'd be all right if I just uh, read the donation and we'll take action on just to show uh, our donations and to uh, thank them. Uh, Ryan and Holly Clevenger, $2,000 for RMS basketball uniforms. Anonymous donation of $1,000 for RMS basketball uniforms. Polk County Solid Waste, $500 to the RHS Life Skills Class. B&K, tan free root beer float coins for Columbia Zebra Zone Prizes. Uh, Dairy Queen, 10 free small cones for Columbia Zebra Zone Prizes. City Pool, 10 one-day family passes for Columbia Zebra Zone Prizes. Ryan and Hope Shally, $10 to High School National Honor Society. And Brandon and Brooke Conley, $10 to High School National Honor Society. So with that, with that uh, we can't take care of any other business at this time. Uh, is there any comment from the public? Okay, board members in? So it looks like Thursday will work. So at this point, we will announce that the, uh, Thursday night at 6.30, we will reschedule the meeting for the business portion. So I appreciate everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, sorry we couldn't do a complete meeting, but uh, things like this happen. So with that, uh, I'll adjourn the meeting. It's 6.30. I'd like to welcome everybody to the board meeting tonight. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. I'll open with a pledge, and I'm on the assignment. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll get started on the financial report. Uh, we need the approval of the claims number 15612 through 15784, totaling $2,672,000, 100, 113 
dollars point fifty four cents. Ian, are any uh, questions or comments about the claims? Okay, need a motion to approve. So moved. Okay, motion by Jenny. Second. Second by Sandy. Enter discussion. All in favor? Right in. Okay, motion carries. Seventy. Payroll. Have a chance to look those over? Any questions? Okay. Need a motion to approve the payrolls as presented? So moved. Okay, motion by Rick. Second. Second by Joe. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries 7 0. Funds report. Uh, Okay, education fund, the end of May. Um, in May, we had receipts of $996,729.68. Um, expenses of $773,864.17. And then we transferred $276,000 from the education fund to the operations fund. That service fund, we had Revenue of $21,123.06, and there were no expenses, which left us with a balance of $1,933,637.91. And the operations fund in May we had re revenue of $50,058.93, plus the transfer from the education <coughs> fund of $276,000, and we had expenses of $455,854.71, and the cash balance of the operations fund was $1,509,961.38. Any questions? Uh, Tom, I know that when we transferred from the education fund to the operation fund in March, the two hundred seventy-six thousand, we're trying to decide about how much to transfer. So we were down to one thirty-eight, then back to two seventy-six. I was I'm trying to keep it consistent, and I didn't transfer anything in the first two months. So I basically did two seventy-six again to get us not get us on a, an even keel. So now I'm hoping the rest of the way we can. Depending on cash flow, we do one hundred thirty-eight thousand each each time. So. Okay. Any other questions? If not, the motion to approve the funds report is presented. So I'm Okay, motion by Sandy. I'll second. Second by Stacy. Any other discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Okay, motion carries 7 0. Okay, report on storm damage and insurance coverage. Sure. So um, our insurance is through a company called Escrift. Um, the, it's an acronym for Educational Service Centers Risk Funding and Trust. Um, our deductible is a $1,000 deductible and that includes all of the damage. Uh, they consider it one incident, one event. So it's the $1,000 deductible. Um, right now the football field sod is being laid. Uh, Channel 4 is helping cover that so you can literally watch the grass grow if you like. <laughs> Um, we are on the west side of the football field, right about the 35 to 40 yard line. They were not able to do any uh, cutting today because of the rain uh, last night. It was too wet, too heavy to move. So I talked to Greg Batten at about 4 o'clock this afternoon, maybe a little bit after. They intend to be here early tomorrow morning. They know that they'll be able to finish phase one, the actual football field section tomorrow. Uh, based on the current weather reports and then they'll start the irrigation and then we'll move into phase two which is more up around the school the greenhouse area we, re we received confirmation first thing this morning that uh, they have determined that the track does need replaced so we'll start coordinating that with the saw that's been uh, going on and, and the phase two of that as well as the greenhouse uh, restoration of that project so we'll uh, work to get that moving as quickly as we can they have replaced our vault and high jump uh, pits, the mats, the, the equipment that goes with that. So that has been ordered. That was a 30, around a $34,000 cost to, um, to replace those systems. We have our fencing quote in. Um, 
And the last thing we're still working on is the greenhouse, and we have two companies that will be providing bids. We hope to see those either tomorrow or Monday for the greenhouse restoration part of the project. The rest uh, will be just those small things that need to go on, uh, small in the overall scheme of things, but the entryways at the schools, um, we're ordering those metals, those products, some of the lighting structures were bent in a storm, so we're getting that taken care of as well. We still anticipate the uh, overall cost of the damage right around the $500,000 mark. Well, the numbers are still coming in. Do you have any questions? A $1,000 deductible. And they have been very good to work with. They've been responsive to the emails. I know that they, uh, a lot of schools, universities, colleges were hit about the same time with those storms that went through within a week's uh, time period of each other and they've been very responsive. They had somebody down here within 48 hours and they continue to communicate. So it's just a matter, it just, it just takes time to, you know, there's a little bit of phone tag and there's a lot of working with the vendors and then returning that information and vetting the process. So we're doing okay. We're on, we're on track to have it all taken care of. Sounds like it's under control. I believe so. <laughs> Knock on wood, Sandy. <laughs> Amy, else have any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, moving to consent items. I have the minutes of the May 20th regular board meeting. Are there any additions or corrections? We'll move through all of them, then we'll vote on the, all the consent. Minutes of the June 3rd special board meeting. Any corrections or comments? Okay, minutes of the June 3rd study session. Any additions or corrections? And the minutes of the June 13th special board meeting. Any additions <coughs> or corrections? Okay, if not, we'll need a motion to approve uh, the consent items. So moved. Okay, motion by Jenny. Second. Second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Right. Okay, motion to carry Sandy. Moving on to action items, approval of technology handbook for 2019-2020. Um, I'll let Scott kind of walk everybody through this. And again, I know it's difficult for those who may be viewing to understand these are things that we've spoken about at the study session. And of course, the public is always invited to attend. Um, Scott, if you want to kind of lead them through uh, sure. those things that we talked about and highlight some of those so those that are viewing may have a better understanding as well. Yeah, with the implementation, imp implementation of the, our new MacBooks for the high school, um, we, with the brand new Macs, um, our pricing was for our old Macs that we had. This would be updating the, for the new MacBooks that we will be getting for the high school, and so we are just updating the cost for repair and everything that we do for the MacBooks. But everything else, would, uh, the same cost would be the same as last year for the iPads that we currently have. So it was just basically updating just for the MacBooks, for the new MacBooks for the high school. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Scott? <coughs> okay, we'll need uh, approval of the technology and what changes. Make a motion. Okay, first by Stacy. Second. Second by Rich. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, let's carry seven zero. Uh, approval high school handbook changes. So Mr. Kiesling uh, was kind enough to print out copies for everybody. Sometimes that's a little bit easier to navigate or to take notes on than scrolling through uh, technology. So Mr. Kiesling, if you want to walk through the sure. handbook changes and as the board will recall as well um, on the second page of that the grading scale if adopted we agreed that that was transferred over to the middle school handbook to provide that consistency between uh, the two buildings and the students who sometimes take classes in both of the buildings so if you want to kindly walk sure. through that uh, first set of changes you'll see is uh, on the dress code and i think that reflects also the middle school uh, handbook as well, but uh, 
shorts and skirts and dresses. Uh, there's an adjustment there to try to uh, be a little more reasonable in terms of that. And uh, the change is uh, no longer fingertip length, but rather uh, no shorter than mid thigh. And uh, so that would be consistent then with each student that way. Um, pants with holes, we uh, the styles are such that we have uh, jeans that primarily that have holes in them. So again, they're, they're, it's now in line with the, the short and skirt rule where we have holes at the same distance allowable, uh, mid thigh and no higher. Um, sleeveless shirts, that's one that we've adjusted. Uh, uh, in the past, there was no sleeveless shirts whatsoever. We're allowing sleeveless shirts, but we want them to be the full, basically full length of the shoulder. Uh, no, of course, spaghetti straps or things like that uh, on that. But uh, again, we've we've taken a real strong look at that. And we have a lot of very tastefully dressed uh, adults and staff members as well as students uh, with uh, with that, and we think that's a, a nice adjustment there. Um, on page 24 of the student handbook, we just pro provided some clarification on the uh, tobacco uh, number 28 on that page. Uh, the first sentence this should read the use and or possession of tobacco, tobacco products, uh, electronic cigarettes, and we've kind of added, we've added vaping devices as well inside of RHS and on the property of RCSC is not permitted. So as we're dealing now with jewels, vaping devices, and those kind of things, we're just providing more clarification that way. Um, page 28 of the student handbook, <laughs> uh, the in-school assignment or ISA section, uh, the second to the last sentence should read, uh, students will complete classwork, and we've also added an offense appropriate counseling session while assigned to the ISA, depending on what that particular offense they're involved with is. And the grading scale on page 43, as, you, as you, the board flips over, all we did there was try to make sure that we're more in line in the A range as we are in the D, C, and B range. Uh, and uh, there you'll see the previous was an A plus was 100%. Uh, now we have it as an A plus at 98 to 100 um, percent. That provides us with some uh, more consistency with the other uh, D, C, and B, or yeah, D, C, and B range. Uh, so that the students are not suddenly in an A range realizing they have to have 100 percent. So a little history on that. I think originally did go to 100 percent because they were worried about giving too many A pluses. As we've talked to the teachers, we just emphasize rigor in the course to account for that. So make sure the rigor is up in the course to, to account for uh, that 98 percentile. So that was a very good discussion, it went well. Um, okay, we have some other kind of general housekeeping things in a handbook each year. Uh, just simply uh, staff members that will simply change assignments such as different clubs and things like that that will adjust. To, re, uh, to reflect uh, accurately what they're doing this particular year. And I think also our, our uh, calendar is another thing that we need to make sure aligns as well. So we have just some general housekeeping things that we'll adjust to, to reflect the accuracy of the year. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kazan. Mm. Any questions? Okay, in motion to uh, Approve the uh, high school handbook changes. So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. Well, second. Second by Joe. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries 70. Okay, approval of high school textbook rental fees for 2019 20. Can we continue on with that? Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, in the algebra, uh, algebra 1, 1B, 1C, algebra 2, 2C, and advanced algebra 2, we have a reduction of $3 per semester from $14.50 to $11.50 per student. That's a reflection of our reducing our use of Alex, the Alex program, and so that reflects that reduction there. 
Pre-calculus is the same thing, a reduction of 975 a semester from 12 to 225 per student. Again, a reflection of the reduction of that use of that program. Um, Harmonia and Manitas, uh, smart music software is $8 per student, so there's an increase there. Um, and that goes along with uh, uh, Mrs. McMillan wanted to uh, really push for that just from the standpoint of it helps the students to rehearse and to read music and it's a great program to, to work along with uh, the curriculum there. Uh, Spanish 2, 3, and 4, what you're looking at there, $26 per semester for uh, Spanish 2 ACP. Uh, Spanish 3 ACP and Spanish 4 ACP. Uh, those really reflect the uh, cost incurred last year, but were not uh, duly reflected in the textbook discussion last year because simply with the dual uh, enrollment, uh, dual credit enrollment, those fees did not come along until later in terms of understanding what those would be due to the universities and higher learning that we work with there. So really that's really a delayed uh, reporting of those fees to this year. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If not, we need a motion to approve the high school textbook rental fees for 2019-2020. So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. One second. And second by Stacy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries seven zero. Okay, approval of auction items from the weight room. <clears throat> so from the weight room and the auditorium, we know that there are some items, especially in the auditorium area, that we feel um, the public might be interested in having. For example, a lot of the seating from the auditorium, we would like to be able to take those out in, in blocks and, and open that up for public bid. I know a lot of times those end up in people's uh, basements or the man cave, those types of things, and it's part of our Rochester history that we want to make sure that our community has the opportunity to, uh, to retain here um, in the area. Additionally, um, Scott and I would be working with Lisa and the uh, ladies there as well as our um, Viridian and the architects to try to combine like items, sound systems, lighting, those types of things that we'll no longer need within the auditorium. Some who may have some antiquated systems such as ours may want those for pieces and parts, those types of things. Being able to begin the, pro the, the breakdown of those, the sectioning of those into meaningful components and starting to get those ready to list. Um, that project won't go underway until around the mid-September time period, so this would allow us the time to start going through those and vetting those for the ability to resell. Same is true in the weight room. We're getting a lot of brand new equipment out in the, the new area. There are some that we will definitely retain. I know that we're growing the middle school program as well. They're coming over some. There are pieces that we most certainly want to keep that are still usable. There are others that pins are broken. There's a lot of rust. There's chipping, those types of things. Um, some people have indicated they may want to use those for purposes other than what uh, the physical lifting, but may be able to use those for for carrying or for weighting things down, those types of things. So those that we know that we're not going to use within the program are, or are uncomfortable using, we'd like to be able to sell those as well. Okay. Any questions? Are you getting some some of the auditorium seats to go with your basketball? <laughs> <laughs> I told you I only need one. <laughs> you don't think anybody will watch no, Charlotte? No. And there will be some time before those go out. We've had a lot of people ask, and so we want to make sure that we make that very clear and communicate that out well. But this will give us time to start having those meetings and grouping them into like categories and taking the pictures and making sure we're ready to post when the time comes. I, I, will, I will make sure that one of those auditorium seats makes it into a tree stand. There's our first sale right there. There you go. Pictures, please. Oh, I'll send pictures. Absolutely. <laughs> Might be I'll too comfortable if I sleep. I might. <laughs> I think there's one that has a Georgia symbol on it or something for you. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> worth sitting on. <laughs> okay, if there are no further questions, I need approval to move forward with the uh, uh, auction items from the weight room and uh, auditorium. So, and Tosh, by Rick. Um, the motion will need to declare that 
as these items are being removed from the old weight room and from the auditorium that they are surplus okay and therefore can be auctioned uh, and there's nothing here that needs to be saved but you know, the administrators the uh, team will uh, declare what is you can only auction off surplus items and so we need a declaration that okay. the items are being that are being sold our surplus items and have no use for the school um, will we need to come back and revisit that once we know what the items are I don't think so. This, think the, as, the, as surplus, that covers it. Yeah, the, the contents of the auditorium right now, uh, if, the, if they leave the auditorium, they'll be surplus. Okay. And, uh, same way with the waiver. Okay. So we'll make the motion for uh, uh, approval of auction surplus items from weight room and auditorium. Yes. Okay. Uh, need a motion? Motion. Okay, motion by Rick. No second. And second by Jenny. Any other further discussion? Okay, all in favor? <coughs> Okay, most carries, 7 zero. Okay. Moving on to donations. We have uh, Ryan Holly Clevenger, $2,000 for RMS basketball uniforms. Anonymous donor of $1,000 for RMS basketball uniforms. Fulton County Solid Waste, $500 to RHS Life Skills class. B&K, 10 free root beer coins for Columbia Zebra Zone prizes. Dairy Queen, 10 free small cones for Columbia Zebra Zone prizes. City Pool, 10 one-day family passes for Columbia Zebra Zone prizes. Ryan and Hope Shally, $10 to the High School National Honor Society. Brandon and Brooke Conley, $10 to the High School National Honor Society. Are there any others? Um, I just received a really uh, interesting donation. It's gonna be fun from Wendy Zint and the Zint family being donated her mother's senior cords and sweater. And so they just arrived in the office and uh, we're gonna, I wanna talk to the administrative team and see if we can't find a unique way to display those somewhere within the district as part of that history in that era and kind of remind uh, students of that as well. So they're in really nice shape and they're a lot of fun. Okay. There have been a lot of those, a big discussion about those on, you know, my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd be amazed how many people from here still have their senior boards. Mm -hmm. And their kids are like, what have a senior cord? You know, they were fun. They were fun they to were pull fun. out and look at. Yeah. That uh, pretty much stopped in what late seventies, because I, I remember my class. Yeah, I don't think we've seen much as the champagne bottle. Okay, so we need a motion to approve the donations. So moved. Okay, motion by Stacy. Second. Second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, most carried seven zero. Once again, I'd like to thank the community and, and all the uh, uh, donors here. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Okay, moving on to personnel report. Hiring James Rhodes, RMS custodian, a rate ten dollars an hour. FMLA, Stacy Ingram, bus driver, from 627.19 to approximately 919 of 19. Designations, Sandra Onifil, Athletic Secretary, effective 628 of 19, and Tamara Brooks, Special Needs Instructional Assistant at Riddle. Were there any, any other additions? Okay, got one added on the 18th. Jennifer Ballman, Riddle, third grade teacher has hired a uh, salary of 44,850. Okay, any questions? A motion to approve the personnel report? So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. A second. And second by Joe, any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion to carry, Senator. Thank you, Sandy, for your time in that department. We appreciate that. 
Mrs. Vance, I, I need to check, but I, we, I've got a uh, hire for a uh, maternity leave, and I thought I sent it in to admin, but I will double check tomorrow. It's not critical for the start of the school year. I mean, it's critical, but it's we can take care of it next. But I, I, wonder, I just want to make you aware okay. that that is taken care of and everything's process is already done. I just need to get it to the, make sure that it's there, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, change in job description for Director of Special Service Assistant. Jen, do you wanna lead us through that? Sure, so um, the highlighted yellow are the changes that um, I'm proposing for the administrative assistant job at the, um, for this office. Um, the 205 day position, it was 260, um, and then the five personal days and five vacation days, those are all more in alignment with the rest of the secretaries in the corporation. And I feel like the 205 days um, reflects, better, will better reflect the needs for this building. Um, and then on the back, or the next page, I guess. Number eight, um, we just made some changes that needed to be changed. Preschool um, is now through um, the Learning Center, and that used to be uh, ASE. I believe ASE is Mr. Keeslin's baby now. And then um, meetings, I just added 13, I added schedules meetings to one prepares for this conference room, so that wasn't in there before. Any questions? We motion to uh, approve the uh, job description for Director of Special Service Assistant. So moved. Okay, motion by Jenny. Second. Second by Sandy. I hear discussion. All in favor? Okay, hold hands up. Yeah. Uh, Stacy, is you up? No. No? Okay, so we got uh, four to three. Or four, four. Those against? And three against. Motion carries four to three. Okay, approval contract renewals on a status quo basis. So um, what we have provided is uh, the, I, first I've spoken to all of the administrators, all of the directors, those that have contracts and what we're proposing now, those are about to expire on June, at the end of June, July 1st indicates our new uh, contract renewal time. Everybody knows that right now those are on status quo. There's a lot of um, monetary situations that are still out there. We're still getting our insurance quotes uh, coming in and asking for more information. Uh, we sat at the table this week and asked them to drill down on a couple of more items for us for the health insurance portion of it. And then uh, we also don't have ADM, budget, those types of things. But I would like to uh, provide the administrators, those on contract, the reassurance that, uh, that we will have those positions coming up and that they will roll over July 1st. So everything in there is indicative of um, a status quo contract, the only two that would have changed would be Mrs. Atkinson and Mr. Keesling moving from an interim contract to the two-year standard administrative contract. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Okay. A motion to approve contract renewals on status quo well, basis. I'm sorry. I, I would like. I'm sorry. I have a question. I'm stopping the table. Okay. <clears throat> Are we able to table this till the next study session? Because I have uh, some questions with the wording of the contracts. Uh, being able to go through them today. Um, just some things that have came up that I would like to discuss um, at a study session. Is, are we able to table it till then? You can make the motion to table. Yeah, I would. I would like to table if we can. I mean, I, did you guys see my email? It was late. Uh, procedurally, you should first take a motion to adopt the status quo contracts as requested, and then a motion to table that action is appropriate. So you get a motion in a second to adopt the status quo contracts, and then a motion to table is appropriate. It's uh, not debatable, and then the board can vote either to table or not table 
and if they table it, then it's uh, put on the on the agenda for next month. If they choose not to table it, then the, you're back to the main motion to approve the status quo contracts. So the first vote, you wouldn't go back to the first vote on this? Well, you go back to the, the first motion. You get a motion and a second, yeah. and then the motion to table comes before you take the vote. Okay. Okay, we need a motion to... Uh, Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, what are the ramifications, since our next meeting won't be until after July 1, if we do not approve these before July 1? For the uh, various principals who are on multi-year contracts, uh, there's no ramification for anyone who's not on a multi-year contract or has a, another year. Uh, we have one, one principal without that. Uh, then effective at the end of the year, uh, they are in a no contract situation. Mm -hmm. um, Create some awkwardness. Um, so. And our classified employees. Classified employees would become an employee, and could so, and could apply for unemployment insurance. Okay. So we'd have to do. We'd have to have one. Huh? You'd have to schedule a study session before the end of the month. Is that when the contracts are up? Contracts are up the 30th. Of this month? So it has to be done beforehand. Okay. Well, and you can't do a special study meeting. session because you can't vote on contracts and study session. Correct. Correct. Unless there's also a, a, uh, You'd have a meeting call yeah. after the session. There you go, like we've done. Okay. Any other questions? Can you, can you make amend, amendments to the wording in the contracts so if we approve it? So that everybody's okay come July 1, they still have their jobs. And then we, at the next study session, have a discussion about can you make an am amendment there, or is it whatever we approve it is what it is? The status quo contracts put them on the current contract. Okay. So after that, you could propose an amendment and then submit that to each employee later on if there was a basis for it. Amending that. One thing Kyle did ask the administrator contracts uh, for the uh, for the certificated parties are are based on Department of Education contracts. So there's a limited amount for the uh, classified, the non certified the non-teaching principals and people like that. Uh, their contracts can be pretty much what we want. So, so we'll. Uh, Call for a motion for uh, approval of contract renewals. So moved. As, how did you word that? Status quo contract. Status quo, as a status quo. Right. So it would be an extension of the current contract. Okay. So, so, we, so, so we, can can amend, we can amend the wording going <clears throat> forward when they come and get their new contracts, is what you're saying. So the status quo is what was from carried over from last year. The amendment can take place for what they'll sign when we bring them their new contracts, correct? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you could you could amend the, the language and then they would choose either to accept it or reject it. Okay. So they get so they have they have a job. Yeah, I want we, they, yeah, they need to have jobs, absolutely. Okay. But you also remember that the state did pass a, a uh, statute that said that a a current teacher, which would include principals and so forth, cannot have the wages reduced. Right, no, no, it's not that, no. no. I just want them to know that yeah, it's not, we're not talking about that. I second Sandy's motion. Okay, there's my Sandy, second my Jenny. I hear discussion. All in favor? Okay, motion carries 7 0. Motion to table. I think he's. No, we're going to, if we can amend, we'll. By all means, give oh, them the okay. security. I mean, that's, yeah. that's great. No problem with that. Then. Yeah, just that, okay. if we can add it to the study session as a discussion okay. point. Yeah. yeah. Motion carries. Seven Thank seven. you. Okay. Yeah. Superintendent business. So just a general reminder, beginning July 1st through July 12th, we'll have an online registration. So parents, uh, families, guardians at home will be able to log in at home and be able to register their student for the next school year. We'll also have a couple of other options for them. We'll be present at the Fulton County Fair the week of the 8th through the 12th there. So if a parent is there or involved with their student in 4-H and has some time and wants to 
kind of do both things at one time and take a break, they're welcome to do that there at the Fulton County Fair and we'll have uh, some assistance there to walk them through that. Additionally, we'll have Mac book sales here in this building July 10th and 11th. And during that time, we'll have some computers up and running that as parents are coming through, we'll provide assistance here for our online registration. So there'll be three opportunities, uh, one at home and then two very much with assistance to help walk them through that process. And then just a gentle reminder to the board on Monday, uh, Mr. Kiesling and I will be doing a trip to Wilmington, Wil 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 <coughs> Illinois to look at an apprenticeship program through the local 150. If anybody else would like to join, if you could let me know so I can begin communicating that out for transportation arrangements. We've got some great internship programs going here, some great job shadowing, and this may be an opportunity to bring apprenticeships here as well. Any, any update on the MacBook sales? Do you know about how many we have for sale, Scott? Um, over 500 and some, but I'm not sure I, I could look, but I, I don't know the <coughs> number as of okay. this week. Then the uh, oh, pickers on the uh, sell, sell time period. So the MAC book sales are July 10th and 11th. The first day we're going to post hours in the morning. I think we said 8 until 1. Yes. And then the second day we're going to run later hours. So those who have uh, maybe work a different shift will have that opportunity. And we're running those 11 until I think we said 7 or 8 o'clock yeah. at night. So. We'll uh, make sure we have those two opportunities that, that kind of flex between the shows. I think we had about 180 students that purchased theirs, and then we've had quite a few staff <coughs> that have purchased uh, MacBooks as well. How much are those? $200. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, any more comments or questions from the board? Anybody from the public? If not, thank you for coming. We'll adjourn the meeting.